you just realised then what it meant to everybody and uh, the closeness to celebrate a victory like that, the friendships that we built in that team. It was simply party time for, for the Wraith Rovers players and everybody involved with the club and everyone in Kirkcaldy. And right enough, they were dancing in the streets of Wraith that night. I remember getting up in the morning and I got a phone call and where are you? She what do you mean, where are you? She says, you should be at Starks Park for a press conference. And I remember there's a picture afterwards and it shows me sitting on a step at Starks Park with a cup in between my legs and I had holes in the soles of my shoes. I looked a mess and I, I know I wasn't a mess. But that was the first wee thing I learned about. You gotta, you've still got your responsibilities. Having won the cup, Jimmy's next responsibility was to win the first division. His team were right behind him. It was his man management skills that... Uh, we're, we're second to none. He was always saying, right, come on, we're going for a game of golf, right? We're going to the bowling, right? Come on, we're going to the go-karts. And that was the way he was. He wanted can everybody be or go out together and be as one. The enthusiasm he has, is, I, I don't actually think it's just for football. It's life in general. He always puts a smile on somebody's face. There was a smile on everyone's face when soon after the cup win, the team went on a 14-match unbeaten league run. By April, Wraith were top, with Dunfermline, Dundee and Airdrie snapping at their heels. On the 6th of May 1995, Wraith had to beat local rivals Dunfermline to clinch the league. It ended nil-nil, and the championship would be decided on the last day of the season. A draw against Hamilton would be enough to win the title and promotion. After a nervy 90 minutes, the game ended nil-nil. Wraith had won the day. But Nickel and DL's playing careers were at an end. It was a great year for me and it was a, it was a great way to leave on a high. The captain winning the double for Wraith Rovers. That meant just as much to me, because the position we're in, as beating Celtic in the Cup. It really did. It was a great achievement. At the start of the 95-96 Premier League season, David Neri ended his playing career and Nickel brought in Tony Rougier and Jim McAnally. The great adventure continued. Even before a ball was kicked in the league, Wraith Rovers had to attend to the UEFA Cup. We were drawn against a team from the Faroes now. I think everybody will have different opinions on how to say the name, but I remember it as go to a trotter flag. I think the pronunciation is Guto Interflag. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce. It was go to whatever. <laughs> I go to no, I go to something. Um Well that team from the Faroes were that Big long name. Big long name, red letter day, Wraith Rovers' first taste of Europe. History was being made all over the place. I managed to score Wraith's first goal in, in Europe. Me sliding in on my backside from about a yard out. and I didn't usually miss for about a yard out, so that was a great feeling. Rovers had taken to this European thing like they were born to hold a passport. They won 4-0 and set off for the return leg in the North Atlantic. It's like a walnut whip. It's like somebody shaved the top of a walnut whip and put a football pitch on the top of it. It's horrific. Suitably, the game was a cliffhanger. It finished 2 all, but Rovers could relax on the cushion of their first leg win. Now for the Premier Division. First up, of all clubs, Celtic. The Hoops carved out revenge with a 1-0 win in the league and then five days later dumped Rovers out of the cup. Their cup. Wraith then discovered that Ibrox wasn't such a welcoming place. Rangers thumped them 4-0. What they needed was the salvation of Europe. They'd never lost there. Bring on the Icelandic side, Akranis. And sure enough, it was back to the old routine. Lennon with a shot. And he scores a dreaded away goal. Lennon. Yes! Looking at Barry Wilson, chance on here. He got the touch. He scored the third. The game ended 3-1 to Ray. The Icelanders' away goal was a worry, but never fear, Jimmy Nick had a plan. But it sounds more suited to formation dancing. I was so worried about the second leg that I must admit I panicked. We played a formation which I've never seen before and I've never seen since. I did a stupid thing and I went with a flat back four but with two sweepers. So I was six at the back and we worked on it and the players looked at me as if I had two heads. I went like, all right, okay, fine. Looking back now, it was... The daftest thing I ever did in football. Akranis loved Wraith's crazy six-man defence and won the game, but only by a single goal. 
Goalkeeper Scott Thompson was the hero as Rovers squeezed through. And I remember the chairman coming to me after the game and said, uh, well done Scott, he says, well, you'll be due a double bonus for this, which I've still yet to have, so if he's listening. <laughs> I remember getting in the airport afterwards, all the Wraith Rovers supporters were at the bar, and I was like, great man, we just... I think the plane was delayed. I think we were all hoping the plane was delayed. And it was a great occasion. It was a great night, it really was. In the next round, Little Wraith Rovers drew one of the biggest clubs in the world, Bayern Munich, three times winner of the European Cup. And superstar Jürgen Klinsmann paid his compliments to a team he'd never even heard of. So we have a lot of respect for the team and we know it's going to be a very tough and difficult match. But uh, uh, we're quite confident anyway. It was a wee bit of fear, obviously, because uh, you don't want to be embarrassed and you don't want to let people down. It was another dream, you know, playing against one of the best teams in Europe. This is what it's all about. This is what we deserve. This is what the fans deserve. The game was switched from Starks Park to Easter Road in Edinburgh. Fans poured out of Kirkcaldy to watch one of the biggest games in the club's history. Playing against the likes of Klinsmann's, Papans, Nellinger's, you know, Cairns, it was absolutely fantastic. The Germans also wanted the ball changed. They actually offered us a thousand pound, I think, to play with a, a tango which they actually used there. Um, but money for Wraith Rovers at that time was no object, so we declined and played with our miter ball and um, still didn't help us in the day. It goes Klinsmann, it's over Thompson, and Jürgen Klinsmann has struck here. Zickler, and Klinsmann to work with in the centre, but Zickler goes on himself. Klinsmann! In the end, it was Klinsmann who had a ball. Wraith now needed three goals to go through. The night before the second leg, Rovers trained at the Olympic Stadium in Munich. They were just a little bit awestruck. Once you go to stadium the night before, you're hyper. Your adrenaline's pumped up. You're so enthusiastic. And I said to Harvey, we're not going to be able to get these boys up the pitch. We're having a wee game of possession. The tangos, the tangos are out at this particular time. They wouldn't, they wouldn't accept our bribe. Ten pound plus a meter ball. I actually had a chuckle to myself, and I thought, I wonder what they would, the German players would make it coming up to Beveridge Park and training up there, and having to move the dog start for the pitch before they train. October 31st, 1995. Under the watchful eyes of Bayern Munich supporters, the last-minute preparations were underway for the second round, second leg of the UEFA Cup. The dressing rooms were bigger than, you know, bigger than anything that we were used to. There was more hair dryers in the dressing room I'd ever seen in my life, so I don't know if that's a German thing or not. Jimmy would have been delighted for that. He, he loved a wee, a wee blow dry now and again. And Jimmy Nicker was doing his team talk. Everybody's sitting there getting pumped up and that, and the next thing he, he throws the armband at me, the captain's armband, and I looked, and he went, Sinky, lead them out. I went, eh? If we're going to be under the cosh, then Sinky's going to be the one to lead by example, not to be frightened. It was an absolute honour to lead the team across there. He was just sheer nerve wracking. You try to hold it in because you've got 10,000 Wraith Rovers supporters up on your left hand side, family and friends and that. You just have to pinch yourself. Eh? I mean, it's a, it's a great thing to be going out and playing football and to be playing in sort of the biggest, one of the biggest stadiums in the world. I want to go out and play, I want to go out and enjoy myself, and I want to go out and make people proud that, you know, we're here to compete. You feel as if you're the small team, you're the underdog. But as soon as the, the ball's uh, kicked, you know, at the start of the game, uh, everyone forgets about this and the nerves uh, disappear and, and you're really enjoying the game. But the enjoyment didn't last long. Bayern got a penalty and I think it was Papan, Tenet, another great internationalist player. You just got to laugh when you think you're playing against these guys. I fancy saving it. Just because the mood I was in, you know, you know, you're used to, once you save one penalty, you're dying for the next one. Yeah, I actually went the wrong way, I was nowhere near it, and he's actually hit the bar with it, so there's a wee bit of luck again. And we started to come into the game slightly, slowly but gradually, um, defending very well, making it difficult to break down. Right, that's it for Wraith Rovers, now it's in foul on Denny then. I get brought down just outside their box um, on the left hand side and we gain a free kick. Actually at that particular time I was hitting a wee purple patch where I was uh, having a wee bit of success with dead ball situations. Yeah! And the next minute the full squad round about me and 
It was elevation. You can actually see in my face, I'm actually surprised that it goes in and I'm looking at the heavens. Wraith Rovers were back in Europe. I just remember that the scoreboard saying Bayern Munich nil, Wraith Rovers won, and the whole of the Wraith Rovers end during the whole 10 minutes of half time was just constantly flashes from all, everybody's cameras taking pictures of the scoreboard. My half time team, it just disintegrated and the, it was a farce really. It doesn't say anything, it just bursts out laughing. And we're all looking at each other thinking, it's, it's waiting off his head, what's happening here? Through the walls you could hear next door, you could hear the, the German lads getting a rally gun. Not that we could understand it right enough, but uh, there were certainly voices raised. I can't do a German accent, but he went, Dennis, blah, 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 Lennon, blah, blah. It was as if he was talking about our players. How's he doing? How's he beating you in there? How's he doing this out? And I just, I said, listen to this, come here. And we all pinned our ears up against the wall. We were all quite confident going out at the start of the second half. I always remember just waving at the camera because I knew my family at home and that would be, be watching it. I think it was about four minutes in the second half. Tony was here from six yards at an angle, hit a side net, and we should have been two up. You just thought to yourself, oh, it's not going to be our day. Jawohl, Klinsmann! But then they got a corner. I'm sure it's actually Ziegler leans on Tomo as Thomas went to catch it. As the final whistle sounded, Wraith's dream of European glory was over. Well, a full time when it's over, you turn around and say, like everything else, you look at the players and you look at the effort they put in and all, all through, not just that night, the whole six years, you turn around and say, right, it's come to this. Brilliant, they've been beaten 2-1 by Bayern Munich, but what an effort it was. It was the end of the road for us as far as uh, Europe goes, but you know, it was a great way to go out because I think uh, I think that season Bayern went on to win it. And I looked across and Nick was going like, go to the supporters. And I just shouted, come on, let's go. Other teams might have just walked off the park that night. But he made sure that we went over as a team, holding hands and, you know, looking into our own supporters and saying thank you for supporting us. And I think it was a thank you to each other as well as players. And, you know, as I say, it, it was quite emotional. We knew that we didn't let them down. Mm. We didn't let Scotland down. It's my proudest moment ever. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, so it was. Jimmy Nicholl had penned a fairy tale, even though at times it had seemed like a pantomime. Sure enough, the manager set off to find out if the streets of London were paved with gold. In February 1996, he joined Millwall, taking Crawford, Dare and Sinclair with him, and Wraith Rovers began a slow decline. But it was a fairy tale, and the memory of what happened over that incredible two seasons will live happily ever after. Jimmy's just a, a special, special man that he, he's got that determination about him to be successful, but at the same time, in defeat, he can also be the man that he is as well. His whole way he goes about his, his job and the way he speaks to people and the way he gets people to come out of their shells and play better. He had a, a great knack of dealing with the different players in different ways and he, he always seemed to get the best out of the, the players he had. I must admit, that season, um, we beat Celtic in the Cup and clinched in the league and the last game and then the Bermuda game, that was, that was, I don't think I'll ever top that. Away from home, removed from...